Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our Rise of the Robots campaign where we are trying to beat the game on Legendary Iron Man difficulty with permanent dark events and are only using sparks plus psionically active characters. It is time. We have 13 and a half, almost 14 days left on our Doom Clock. So we want to reduce another alien facility and really get a firm grip on that globe, uh, global sc um, scale. Uh, we have expanded quite a bit. And thanks to now instant contact uh, management to new areas, we can even um, expand faster and faster in the future. And I'll make sure that we will always have one of the facilities in range. That way we will not uh, suffer any more, any more avatar project. The game had been quite a, quite a difficult game uh, with regards to the avatar projects. I didn't like it. Uh, it threw us, I think two major breakthroughs and one minor breakthrough. So other than that, we got the Rage Armor, which is a big fat, which is a big fat heavy armor, and it has a rocket launcher just like everyone else, a heavy weapon. We're going to go with a Mimic Beacon, because why not? And since this here is a psionic character, I sort of wanted to look bluish. That actually looks fantastic. I've never really changed the color scheme, but boy oh boy, it looks even better in blue. Okay, cool. Secondly, we need someone to pick up the slack for the lack of blue screen rounds. We still got the Skulljack here, but I think we don't need that anymore. I like the battle scanners, they work well so far. Two mimic beacons are more than enough and we got this force to be reckoned with. Those three mechs are just overpowering the enemies, quite frankly. We have no alien ruler in here, so we should be good to go. And we landed. Let's move to the designated position. I absolutely love the sparks, guys. It is getting better and better as we play. Boy, boy, and they are tanky. 20 hit points for armor. That's a small sec to put right there for you. Vector is taking the point. Nothing. Continues to move up. Still nothing. All right. Glaive is moving over here. Dagger is moving over here. So we're setting up that nice little fire line. We're using Glaive as a full cover. Roby moves over here and True Rebel has a bit of a hard time catching up. Takes the tree as full cover. Oh, mechanical units. So we got blue screen rounds. We got blue screen rounds. And we got nothing. We got no blue screen rounds. Okay, cool. Good. Let's start with killing the Codex. Because let's face it, no one really wants to fight a Codex. This guy will just overwatch and stay where he's at. Oh, big shocker. Good. Dagger can take the overdrive. We have two more, so we're good to go. And that's slowly but surely whittling him down. Oh, 
Well, that's the advantage of having a fire support mech. Even without blue screen rounds, that was a lot of damage. Okay, we're sort of keeping it to this high ground. Just decided staying over here. Let's take a peek. Good, so we got a patrol here, we got a tower up there. Nothing that we could not handle. Gotta close our fire line again. And there is the warlord. Finally, I wanted to fight him one more time. So far, he only, yeah, approached us once and that was pretty much it. And it was a pretty, uh, pretty pitiful appearance. So he's easy to hit from high ground, which we have plenty of. And yeah, we can shred him. He hasn't had chance to train yet, so you can see his armor has not yet increased. Just got a little more dangerous. Stay on top of its position and try to take it out. Okay. Thanks, Bradford. Good. We want to continue like forming this fire line. I mentioned how momentum is a thing. We don't have any timer here, so there's really no point in rushing it. And how you can just nicely form that fire line is we know that there is line of sight here we don't want that how you can nicely form that fire line is just put your troops in one sort of continuous line just like i'm doing it On the move. using cover if needed Spread out a little bit so that grenades will not immediately hit you. And then we're just overwatching. Doesn't need to be perfect. Oh, we know that the pack is back there. Doesn't need to be perfect, but it certainly helps if they are kind of in one line. And the reason why a line is a good setup is usually when enemies approach you and are reasonably close then they will run a bit towards you and if everybody is kind of on that one line everyone will get a chance to to take a shot that's really what you're looking for What often happens is, we know they are up there, what often happens is if one, let's say if one of uh, your soldiers just exceeds uh, and, and takes the point position by themselves, it very often happens that um, they might trigger something and there's just not enough follow-up. I've seen that time and time even in my own uh, runs and I've always got frustrated. So the fire line is a good setup. It specifically works well with uh, with um, sparks because they can stand in the open and you can just move it. With soldiers, it's a bit more difficult because you need to take cover. But yeah, this here is a great example where essentially your Having a couple of uh, the a uh, couple of the soldiers who would not be able to take a shot if this guy would have stayed over there, but instead he decided to move in, and thus he went in front of uh, the in, uh, in front of the fire line. So yeah, no need to over explain it. I guess you guys get the concept. We're just reloading. Again, momentum is a thing. I want to make sure that we do have enough ammunition. We know there is another pack back here. 
one more round so next round will be the summoning of the zombies okay two towers moving up here and let's give him full cover by standing there single blue moves first and foremost Now, interestingly enough, that's not even going to kill this tower. This would kill the tower. No armor penetration. Good. Let's try to get it down. Took the only person who didn't have uh, blue screen rounds, by the way. My bad. Good. Pretty heavy towers, but we managed to chew through them. Now it's important not to pull anything, which is why in this case it's probably even a better choice to just overwatch. Zombies are going to come uh, come in and we might be able to kill two of them. And so far, not a lot of not a lot of fight from the opposition. We got two of uh, we got uh, kill on two of the enemy patrols. You know there's a third one near our, our position. Okay, how's the ammunition looking? We're still good to go, I would say. So. Now is the time to trigger these guys or be completely shocked and surprised if they have moved on. Just a moment. The sparks are determining kind of the area that I'm willing to cover. So everything outside of this area would be a no-no. Good. And in terms of just getting rid of the cover, let's use our first explosive. Worked like a charm. We even opened a new way to enter there. That's a kill. And that's another kill. Just want to make sure that we get the kills onto the sparks because they can get XP. Meanwhile, everybody else can not get any XP. The Psyops can only level up through training, which is why I've covered oftentimes why I think that Psy operatives in normal missions are kind of a waste because that good uh, good XP is just going to waste. Let's get this here. Superior hair trigger and superior laser sight. Wow, that's good. And chosen information. Well, that's not bad. I like it. Okay. Well, that's a pretty 
tough pick up here. I'm surprised to see them. Probably as much as they are surprised to see me. Luckily we have kept all of our cooldowns. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. Yeah, I want to hit all three of them. So I'm willing to take that extra step here with overdrive. Because this here should send all of them to the ground. Ooh, you're telling me they are that they have barely well it's okay we're sending two of you to the ground good enough for me how much damage is the Nolans doing six to nine that's not bad So, as a free movement action that should not end his turn, we're going to move in. Nice! Love the armor. Good. There was another last type of enemy. I don't know where they are currently, but this year we'll eventually kill them once they're softened up. Vector moves up. That's not a 100% kill, because we cannot rely on automatically critting. Which means we gotta get another Overwatch, uh, Overdrive going. Very nice. Well done. Can someone tell me where that last guy went? I know we can use a battle scanner. Perfect. That makes sense. So that's one option. That's another option. Both of them are pretty neat. Given that we can kill the mech in a different way, I will probably take, take the chance to use the heavy weaponry instead of instead of just using null lens. But for shits and giggles. Let's optimize, by the way, our movement first. Moving, Moving down. And now we're going to go with a null lens. Couple of psionic abilities, not that it is absolutely needed, guys, but still. Good 
good job. Too much, too much destruction for the enemy to handle. And we would have even had Mimic Beacons and more destruction. One more round until... One more round until we're going to see zombies. We're just moving over here. Reloading. Don't need to get on top of the roof yet. Oh, hello! You came to the wrong place, mate. There is only death and destruction here. Please trust me. A Mac Lord overwatches. I do as I must. I must Lol, he's imita uh, intimidated. <laughs> it failed, but he still is intimidated. Good. We do have the ability to just answer this obnoxious behavior with a nice little shredder gun. We do not have overdrive, but I think the shredder gun is still the right answer. How dare you come to our house and do these things. Very good. I think that clarified who's boss. Void Rift is dealing still two to three points of damage. That's unfortunately not good enough. Let us kill the mech. All right. Okay. Moving up just so that we can set up the warlock are you kidding me you executed him now we just have to work on putting them down for good okay well hmm that was disapp disappointingly easy to kill him but it was equally fun another superior laser sight well too bad for him but pretty damn good for us this run is absolutely fantastic it's a lot of fun Okay, next round we're going to evac right here. I think we don't even have any enemies left. Yeah, I already mentioned that I'm not going to farm reinforcements. We had plenty of consumables left over. And we leveled half of the building. Very nice. Okay, cool. I mean, it was fun. 
I'm not sure if we really would have needed the C4s after essentially leveling half of the place just with rockets and grenades. But who am I to tell? 18 kills. Good job. Let's go, boys. And here we go. Dagger got a promotion. That is good. Love it. So we're going to go with Intimidate as well. Might as well double down on it. These two here have increased their cohesion. That's cool. And we got a lot of superior weapon enhancements. Progress on Avatar Project is delayed. That's exactly what we wanted to see. So, greater resolve. Lightly wounded soldiers can be sent into, contact, uh, into combat. That's not bad either. I like it. Theoretically, it would cost us 250 supplies. That's, that's a lot. But I mentioned beforehand that I would be making contact with at least one more region. That is it. We can't establish any new contacts until we upgrade our systems. We're picking up indications of the Elder's Warlock actively working in this region. Yeah, we're continuing to use this here as a fallback option. I also would like to get to India. It seems to be difficult. I don't know if there is a direct connection, but there's probably one from Indonesia so that we can get those three blips here as well. Might as well, since we need to build two towers in order to get greater resolve, which I definitely would want to have. Might as well start building the tower here. That gives us the ability to make contact for only 80 intel to the next blip. And we have finished domination training number one. Solace is super good. I like it. Soulfire is very good as well. I think we're going for Solace because it uh, removes all of the mental impairments, excluding mind control. So that's a mini mind shield in itself, but in an AOE version. And the rookies continue to take the hits for Hogbite. That is great. Black Market gives 30% of a bonus. You know, that's fine. I think we're going to reduce Avatar progress here. That's nasty. New orders, soldier get more experience. That's not needed for us. I like this one here, but the captured soldier is a problem because we can still not use anything but our Templar. Psy operatives are not high enough yet. That's, that's a bummer. Okay. So yeah, I want to reduce this, but we need 24, uh, 25 supplies. So what we're going to do, since we're broke again, is we're going to visit the black market and basically take it from there. Yeah, we're going to settle two more sectored corpses. We at best need one more mine shield, mutant corpse. And that's enough. We don't need more. Just needed to prevent anyone from getting captured. So Let's reduce the avatar progress. Hogbite, 
plus a soldier who is taking the hits for him. In this case, this rookie here. Perfect. So we still got a high ambush uh, chance, so might as well give this poor fellow here a proper gun. Do we give him blue screen rounds? Might as well. And let's confirm the action. We will begin the covert action immediately, Commander. This will get our avatar problem pretty well under control. Because once we are okay with the Avatar project, it's smooth sailing from there on. We have a huge lead when it comes to research. Good. Got more income. We're now almost at 700, which is fantastic income. Don't have the intel to continue our expansion, so that's fine could get that here. I don't think that it's really worth pursuing that. So Intel supplies. Hmm. I'm not sure it will do you any good. Let's just uh, scan at the Reapers because that gives us more flexibility. We're immediately getting Intel and it is just as good as so uh, after five or six days, it gives you just as much Intel as an Intel drop. Got even more domination training here. This is fantastic as well. Boy, they are getting all the good stuff. Stasis is good as well. I'll just take that for crowd control purpose. And we have a few more missions. So we got a scientist and a hidden event, which I don't know what exactly that is. We got this one here, which we need to do because I don't want to pay. Um, I don't want to um, take twice as long to scan. And we got something that is not really relevant. So yeah, there are a lot of losts here. So we're up for yet another lost mission. Cannot get enough of those undead suckers. And let's before we end today's mission just do a bit of a sanity check for the weapons that everybody is happen, uh, having first and foremost it's only one more day until plasma rifles are ready and then we need to really save those alien alloys and the alarium to upgrade the weapons in terms of uh, this here Superior stock is already pretty damn good. Superior hair trigger wouldn't be bad either. Probably better than a normal stock, so let's take that. And he does have an expanded magazine and a superior scope, so that's good in itself already. We got personal um, combat sims, so that is also done. And I think we're pretty much set. I mean, we don't need the superior lasers as much. Yes, they are great for critting, but uh, we really don't have a shotgun or anyone who is yeah, trying to crit all the time. We're doing quite, uh, quite well the way that we have built everything, so don't really need to change that. My biggest grudge is we only have one Templar and I seem to not be able to to to, uh, to easily get to that next uh, level. I hope that we're soon going to um, be able to use these here on covert, uh, covert Ops missions. I'm not sure if their ranks count, but I want to get that extra Templar recruitment mission only thing I'm scared of is I don't want to lose Hogbite to kind of that random low chance of getting captured. That would suck. 
So got to figure out how to deal with that. And since we have no other high level uh, soldier that can go onto the undercover missions, Sparks cannot do that. We're sort of stuck. And I definitely want to kill the Warlock for his weapon. And I also want you guys to see the fight against the other two alien rulers, because I think the Berserker one was um, not only quite interesting, but also fun to see. So let's take a look at the other two. I'll try to get them as soon as possible. And of course, with the uh, creation of the Shadow Chamber, we're soon going to continue our golden storyline mission. I will not drag out the campaign longer than needed, so expect that I will go uh, fairly quickly, but I still want uh, to also demonstrate to you how endgame looks like with the sparks and how I would skill them. Many of you said uh, they were only able to uh, skill the uh, sparks into sort of that captain uh, rank and then the campaign ended. And that seems to be a common uh, theme because you usually get them a little bit later if you're not rushing them. I want to do it a bit different and I really want to level them up so that you see how endgame sparks are working. I think by now it is quite clear that three of them are already at this point completely rolling over the enemies. The level of cover removal is fantastic and unless you're wasting your consumables with with one overdrive and just one um, uh, rocket, you're usually set. Uh, that is more than enough. It removes all of the cover and enemies just fall like flies afterwards. So that's pretty strong. I would argue if you're using your Grenadier for only cover removal, the Sparks are a valid alternative to that but the Grenadier of course is stronger as a class um, given that at the end this class can have like three grenades so there is plenty of cover removal the grenades themselves will deal more damage if you give him a uh, heavy armor uh, then on top of that you will have another heavy weapon so the cover removal is definitely superior and also with um, the PCSs and with training ground you usually can get even more armor so the maximum armor that you can get is basically a, a grenadier with uh, armor padding and then uh, a heavy uh, armor and put a vest in into it um, and then you're ending up at five armor which is pretty damn tanky unless the enemy is using laser weapons you should be able to withstand a couple of blows big other advantage of um, grenadiers is they of course can stack agility if uh, if you so desire so dodge is a real thing and keep in mind armor is deducted from the damage after the actual dodge is determined so let's say you're standing in the open and uh, you're being shot at then first of all it's determined if you if you dodge and after the dodge the damage is determined then armor is de uh, uh, detracted and then you take the final amount of damage so long-winded way of saying uh with dodge damage is halved and then five armor taken off of it pretty much gets you to like one damage every single shot unless they are starting to uh, shred you uh, which only a few enemies really can do so that is um, why despite of their great power uh, at the end at the very very end game with the right items the grenadiers are of course stronger but keep in mind with the sparks it's kind of a no-brainer you don't need to skill them in a certain uh, fashion they just level up if you take decent skills they get a lot of armor if you uh, if you want to be on high ground you don't need to have a specific armor to grapple up uh, there yes the icarus armor is better and yes you don't have enough uh, as many free actions as you would but it you you can bypass a lot of uh, these special items and let's say you do have a run where you lost a lot of the special items and you try to recover then the spark is really that solid fundament which which you can use in order to do that it uh, fulfills basically every single role if you wanted to uh, to to do that 
and with more than one spark like having those two sparks is probably a pretty decent setup the four basic classes and then uh, two sparks or every uh, every class except grenadier two sparks and um, then whatever you want to uh, fill in as the hero classes or alternatively switch the ranger for the reaper you get the gist you you can put uh, two sparks in there and have valid team setups that can perform pretty decently in in the end game i would give them a decent rating in all of the categories they are kind of an all-rounder and they are incredibly easy to manage so you don't need to have a lot of experience with all of the skill trees and the extra equipment you can just play them and they are pretty straightforward as you see you just blow shit up and then kill them easy enough right anyways that's the end of today's uh, video i hope you enjoy the explanations at the end and kind of the thought process uh, leave a comment down below and let me know if those uh, thoughts are helpful for you if you even watch to the end of the video or if you're just interested in that big fat action and yeah hit the like button and we're seeing each other in the next episode bye bye